So here it is. The container is here. Right after he dropped it down on the ground, it started pouring rain. So I wasn't able to film anything. And then the next day it rained all day. I just wanted to give you guys a quick walk around of this thing, show you the pros, the good things, the bad things about it. Uh, talk about prices and stuff like that. And then uh, the next video, we'll do some other stuff. I got some plans. There's plans in the works. So when it was getting delivered, uh, I did a live stream. It was absolutely horrible, I know, but my internet's really bad here. But it was kind of all right. I uh, did get a lot of comments in that live feed that I was able to go back and check out. And uh, so I just want to address some of those that came through on the live stream. During the live stream, a lot of people were saying that's all he's going to do is support the, the four corners. These things are made to be supported by just the four corners. Those, the corners go below this beam by like a half inch. So if you were to set this thing down on the flat ground on concrete, it's only going to be touching in those four corners. Also, these things are meant to be stacked on top of each other. So the, the one that goes on top of this sits right on top of those, the corners. So you really only need to support the four corners. Now, when you start cutting into it, if I cut in a door, if I cut in a window, you're going to be taking away a lot of that rigidity that's in it. So I need to support underneath it when I cut it. I'll weld in additional supports when I cut it out so that I can take those braces out. So then eventually when the crane picks it up, it won't buckle this thing. That makes sense. So as of right now, I have the four corners posted. Um, that six by six was bowing down significantly when he put it down, wasn't able to use the two. So I put a post into the center. I jacked it up and put a post in the center, some cinder blocks there. Uh, for now, I think it's strong enough, it's fine. Uh, I did put this in there, but it's not touching. It's kind of just a safety type thing in case this thing falls over. But my concern is it's not going to just drop. It's going to slide like this. And so if it has that sliding motion, it's going to knock over whatever is there. So a little sketchy getting underneath the thing. But before I get underneath it, I will make sure I have extra safety measures in place so that I don't get crushed to death and die. That would be a horrible way to go. Was that a little too negative for you? Sorry, Debbie Downer. A lot of people were surprised that it was brought with just a regular dually truck, probably a 350. I don't know, don't remember exactly what it was, but um, this thing's only weigh 8,400 pounds, I believe, or 8,800 pounds. Plus that trailer was a gooseneck, which can hold over 10,000 pounds, and that truck can tow probably 20-ish thousand pounds. So um, that is doable. Once you put stuff into this thing, that's when you need to get an 18 wheeler involved. So once this thing is done, that's when I will have a crane come lift it and put it onto a proper trailer and bring it to wherever it goes and then take the crane again and lift it off. So big dollars to move these things, but same thing with my tiny house, I've rarely moved it. I've moved it once. One great thing about this is it's still a mobile structure. It's just a little more permanent than a tiny house trailer, a little harder to move but still gives you that mobile aspect with a little more square footage. So I think that's a major plus. Now, when you buy shipping containers, there's a bunch of different grades. There's several different grades. There's WWT, which is wind and water tight. There's C something something, I forget. Maybe I write it down at the bottom right here, but um, that is still seaworthy. And then there's some called one trip. One trip is basically it came from China or wherever it comes from, you know what I mean? It comes from overseas comes over to America and that's it. You buy it then. Those cost about nine, ten thousand dollars but they are in almost pristine brand new condition and uh, there's my water's full. I gotta shut the water off. Typically the ones that are still seaworthy are gonna be about five to six thousand dollars depending where you get it from and where you live. Prices can vary significantly. This one is uh, wind and water tight meaning there's no holes in it and it's got minimal rust and so it's just watertight is basically all I care about. I got this as cheap as possible. I bought the cheapest one I could find. This was uh, $2,750 plus delivery and all that stuff. I spent $2,915 on this one. That is including taxes, North Carolina state tax, like seven point something. Uh, shipping was like 250. So I think it was a good deal under $3,000 to have a 40 foot high cube. So nine foot six tall. Um, was, was a pretty good price. I priced them out from a lot of different companies. Shut up. Some of them were like $3,500, $4,000. 99% of the companies you're gonna buy these from are gonna be middlemen. I've probably said this previously in the video, but it's very difficult to get one. 
Uh, the internet is saturated with places to buy these things. If you go and type in shipping container, it's going to be buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. You know, there's not much information on converting one of these to something. So just be careful when you're starting to, to buy one. Don't throw down a lot of money uh, because you could end up screwing yourself. I only threw down $250 for the delivery. And then when he got here, I got to see it. He, he set it down on the ground and then I paid in full. I was able to go and peek inside and look at it. Now, what makes a shipping container no longer seaworthy? I've read somewhere a long time ago that when there's three holes, shut up, I'm gonna kill that one chicken. So I was looking around the container for those patches that have been put into this thing. I found one right here. This is just a little welded on patch. And then there's another one right there. And then the third one I had a hard time finding, but when I went inside to the trailer, I saw a, a large patch on the roof. So that was the three patches. So the next hole that got put into it was no longer gonna be seaworthy. And that hole is gonna be right here. These doors are in absolutely atrocious condition. I will end up patching this. I might buy a new uh, rubber gasket, but I'm gonna get all this rust out of here, prime everything. I'm gonna de-rust the whole thing the best I can, prime it, and then paint it. So I'm gonna take care of these, I'm gonna patch that um, over the next few months, years, years, who are we kidding, Dan? So when this thing was delivered, I noticed this writing on here, EST, I don't know what that means, estimate, that's what I would think. But it says, rep R1, R2, floor week, STN, a lease L slash S number 11, straighten, pitch, bolt, rear header, patch, bolt, rear header. Don't know what that means. C, left door, bottom. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that's pretty shitty right here, but that was worse. I'm not too concerned about these doors being watertight because these are gonna end up being left open. This is gonna end up being a giant window on the end here. Not definite about anything I ever say about the design, but, but most likely that'll be a, uh, a glass door, a glass window. <laughs> Extremely, I'm gonna kill that one. Peanut, go and get the one to make a noise. So this door is like rusted shut. It's not rusted, it's just really hard to open. It looks a little bent in the corner up here. So it's difficult to open. There's holes, which I thought maybe grease certs went into, zerts, grease zerts went into. Uh, so I've just lubed it up with some WD and Maybe over time it'll become easier to open. So before we go into this thing, as soon as I step foot in it, the audio is gonna go weird. You can probably already hear it. Until I get this thing framed out inside and some insulation in it, it's gonna have a really weird audio sound on it. So I apologize for that in advance. I'll probably bitch about it a lot later. I need some light. That's, that's high on the priority list. So when he delivered this thing, how do I talk so it's not absolutely offensive? Very lightly. So when he delivered this thing, as soon as it was on the ground and I was able to open the double doors to peek in, I just peeked, I cracked it open just a little bit so I could see inside it. I wanted to see pitch black basically. I didn't see any rust spots on the ceiling. That light was coming through. So I'm assuming the ceiling is good or the roof is good on this thing. Didn't notice any light coming through on the floor or anywhere. But now that I'm in here now, I'm seeing that the plywood's not absolutely perfect. But what I think I'll do is um, I might put down some three quarter inch plywood. I'll glue it down and then I'll screw it down to this. Uh, this plywood that's on here is very toxic from what I've read and, and, and researched. These things go overseas, so there's salt water in the air and I would assume it's in the air, right? So this, this plywood has to be extremely durable. So it's some pretty nasty stuff. Don't wanna be messing with it. Typically when you have some nasty type chemicals on woods or metals or anything like that, if you just cover them up and don't disturb them, you're generally gonna be pretty safe. So that's what I think I'll do here is I'm just gonna cover this over with some, some plywood and then I will uh, put my hardwood flooring in. So the third patch that I found is right here. See that red paint coming through maybe? That piece has been patched over and painted and painted lead paint too, that's good stuff. If it's flaking like that, lead paint, most likely. So a while back, I was watching a video about shipping containers. A guy was giving a walkthrough just like I am. He was talking about this floor right here and he was like, it looks like there's been a patch here. This is not a patch. This is for the bottom of the shipping container doesn't have joists that run through there. So it's just a piece of sheet metal to give it strength. That is, I believe that's because when they put this thing down onto a regular conventional trailer, the, the hitch assembly on the front of the trailer needs to accept that area, it needs to have it empty. So that's normal, 
and find, I will end up closing that in with insulation, but I need to also make that area removable underneath so that when I do move this thing, it can be, uh, it'll be fine. But overall in here, it looks pretty good. Uh, I will say that right up here, boom, right there, there's a large dent in it. It looks like it's dropped down a little bit. So I believe that's probably gonna hold some water. So I'm gonna come in here with a sledgehammer, tank that back up before I do the ceiling. There's also four of these little vents right there. Maybe you can see that one better. See the orange coming through? There's, uh, there's four of those little vents in this thing to help keep it cool. I will tell you that these things get extremely hot during the summer. Uh, never store propane, never store anything that has gasoline in it because it gets so hot that it will vaporize the gasoline uh, and it will also take the propane, expand it, it'll blow the little gasket relief valve Releasing that gas and any little spark in here will set that thing off. Maybe I'll show you a picture of what these things look like when they explode because people put stuff they shouldn't inside of them. So keep that in mind if you're planning on storing anything in a shipping container. Now as far as that writing that was on the outside there, the door, someone put a circle here and wrote weak. I looked underneath the trailer, the steel looks good. I think these screws have just popped loose or the plywood right here is cracked. But when I do the floor plywood on here, I think that'll solve any problems. Maybe, I hope. I know some people are gonna say, why don't you take this plywood out? This plywood is the most difficult thing to take out. Uh, you, will, you will spend a lot of time trying to remove it, so. And then also, I'm gonna have to create a lot of dust. Doing it, chances of getting a splinter. Who knows what's in this stuff, okay? This is probably 15, 20 years old. So it's probably still got some nasty stuff in it. These containers are used to ship everything that you could possibly imagine. You know, clothing, electronics, everything that comes from overseas, as well as chemicals and stuff like that. Sometimes those chemicals leak inside these things. So there could be some really harsh chemicals in the plywood from the stuff that it transported. So I kind of want to go up on the roof. Peanut, we need a ladder. Yeah, we need a ladder, lots, lots of ladders. So I wanted to give you a quick peek underneath this thing. This area right here, I know the lighting's bad, but this area right here is where that, that sheet metal is inside the trailer. And then you can see the joists underneath it. They look about one foot on center. They look about five inches. It's like five inch C channel, about two inches wide. But I am gonna spend a lot of time underneath here because I wanna insulate underneath it versus inside it. So over the next few videos, we're probably gonna spend quite a bit down here. Looks like they sprayed it with tar. I know that's one thing you never get to see is the underside of a shipping container. Now, before we go up onto the roof, I just wanted to show some of the sides here. You can see these big dents in the side of it. Obviously, the more you pay, the better your shipping container is gonna look. Uh, I don't mind these things. I, I think it gives it character. I, I don't want to take this thing and make it look nothing like a shipping container. I want people to look at it and be like, that's a house, but that used to be a shipping container. So, ooh, I told you what I'm doing with it. Well, come on, Tiny House Customs. Stay with me, people. Definitely, uh, if, if you're able to see it before you buy it, make sure that if you don't want anything like this, you pay a little bit more so you don't get it. Also, this rail right down here on the bottom is flat, so it's gonna hold a lot of water. It's just gonna pool up, so it's gonna be stagnant water. So you're gonna get a lot of rust right here. So this is a good point to check, a good area to check to see for some rust. You can see right in this one right here, this is obviously bent down or bent up a little bit, so it held more water and I've got rust on it. The bottom of this right here, this has got rust on it. Nothing a little grinding. There's a, uh, a tool I'll be buying. It's a bunch of needles that go like that. I don't know what it does. I forget what it's called, pointer or something. I forget. It's in my Amazon shopping cart, ready to go. Only $50. Let's go up onto the roof. I've not been on the roof yet, so this will be the first time. Am I allowed to walk on the roof? I would assume you can, right? Oh my gosh. There's a swimming pool right here. Oh, not good. So the roof definitely has a, a bow into it, so the water will drain off. There's some spots where I see stagnant water. It's gonna be okay. It is a little bouncy, so I wouldn't jump around up here because you could kink the metal. So right here, it looks like I've had some patchwork done. Uh, I'm gonna clean that up and reprime it, repaint it. I've got a spot right here where it was dented in and there was some stagnant water. And then like I said, when I was inside, there's that, that dent in it right here and that obviously was holding water. So I'll try to fix that. I might fill some of this with some Bondo to raise it up versus bending it completely out. Uh, I don't know, time will tell. 
but that's not bad compared to this front. This front looks really bad. So this is definitely a major buzzkill. This is gonna be probably the worst problem I have on the entire shipping container. This is bent way down, it's puddled. There's a crack in this front beam and it looks like that beam could be a hollow beam, which means that entire beam's filled with water because there's a hole in it right there. So I'm gonna drill that out so it drains and then I'll probably cut a piece of sheet metal that is that size and I will, uh, I'll put some reinforcement underneath it and then I'll weld it on there so I can reshape this and make this so the water drains off because this metal right here doesn't have too much life left in it. So that'll be a, a patching project that I'll do eventually when I get up to the roof maybe. Once I get this thing all patched and primed, I will paint this white. Put two coats of white. I thought about using that like rubber paint. You see it on the info commercials. But uh, I think just some white paint, some flat paint. I don't know. Which is better, gloss or flat? Which one reflects more light? I would think flat because gloss is going to track it but reflect it. I don't know. I did some research and I couldn't find shit on that. Maybe you know. I don't know. I was going to say, I once fell off a roof, but to be completely honest, I fell off many roofs. I broke my back getting catapulted off of a roof. I once had my ladder right on the fascia because I was doing a roof job, and the ladder sunk into the sand in the ground and fell off the fascia, and there was like a two-foot overhang on the house, and it fell back towards the house, but the fascia hit me and set me down and I landed right on my head. How I didn't get paralyzed from that one is amazing. How I didn't get paralyzed when I fell and broke my back getting catapulted is amazing. So I hope that was a halfway decent tour of the shipping container, things to look for, things to be concerned with, what you're expecting to get when you buy a shipping container, especially a, uh, a WWT, wind and water tight container. One thing I just noticed right here, there was a, uh, a placard that was on there, they took the placard off. That right there is another red flag. What was on that placard? I know placards are changeable so you can put different things on them, but that kind of looks a little shady to me. Placards generally mean that there's something toxic inside of it. So, shady business right there. But I hope that video was helpful for you. Uh, I know that information that I kind of went over in this video was information that I was looking for before I purchased one. It's very difficult to find information on these things except for buy me, just buy me. Everyone wants to sell you one. I don't want it. I got one. I just need information on how to do it. Well, that's why you got Tiny House Customs. So if you like this channel, you like what I'm doing here, you want to watch this become something, it's going to be a while. My Tiny House took three years. Some of you have been around for the entire thing. This is the next thing. This is the ne this thing's huge, massive project. What did I do? Oh my gosh. I got a shipping container. But yeah, if you want to follow along, you can subscribe. If you liked this video and thought it was cool, I know I was extremely excited when it came. You can give it a thumbs up. You can uh, also comment your nonsense. I love reading your nonsense. It's always down there in the bottom there. If you want to read some nonsense, you can go down there and read what people wrote because it's generally useless. My videos, I try to keep my videos a certain length, which means I can't say every possible thing that you're thinking in a one video. It's impossible. So, of course, I'm going to not have this little bit that you said, like, but come on. I thought about it. So please, please, just, just stick around. This will be a fun project, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, next video, I'm going to go over the measurements. I'm going to measure the hell out of this thing. One thing I wanted to know is how wide are these things? How long are these things? How tall are these things? Exactly. I don't want eh numbers. I want what the hell is a fucking number? Sorry, got a little angry there. Maybe I need another drink. Haven't even had one yet. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.